I'd like to do today is to tell you a bit about um, the National Panel for Archaeology, Archaeological Archives in Wales, because uh, Wales has now uh, managed to get it into a, um, a rather different situation in that we now have um, a very formal um, setup for our archaeological archives in Wales. So it's very much the work of this panel and, and how we're starting to look to future proof um, the archaeological archives that I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, to you this morning. Oops, and that's the pointer. No. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so um, back in 2002, I think, it was realised in Wales that we had uh, a number of issues concerning archaeological archives and that we really needed to start to do some uh, detailed work to look into uh, what this situation was. So we set up um, a very informal group initially that comprised just members of the Royal Commission, the National Museum of Wales, uh, the Glamorgan Gwent Archaeological Trust and um, the then Council for Museums in Wales. And we funded and commissioned a survey uh, resulting in this report that's become known as the What's in Store report. Um, this report uh, made eight recommendations, um, all of which were implemented over around a five year period. Uh, and one of the recommendations that was made within this report was that um, we needed to set up a formal national panel for archaeological archives for Wales. Um, the setting up of this panel was perhaps a little snow initially, um, but um, eventually the Historic Environment Group, or HEG as we call it, which acts as a, an advisory panel directly to the Welsh Minister for Culture, um, decided that it should establish a subgroup um, that would advise them on all matters concerning the Welsh archaeological archive. Um, so the panel was set up. Um, initially there wasn't um, a great deal of progress, but back in 2012 that all started to change, um, partly because of the um, SMA. Um, they were asking the Welsh uh, HEG to provide funding for a review of Welsh of archaeological archives and HEG felt it might be more appropriate if um, there was something <coughs> that followed on from the What's in Store report to make it a bit more Welsh uh, specific and that's um, really where I perhaps come in because at that point I was asked to uh, take on the role of chairing the um, newly formed national panel um, and to start um, the journey that um, I'm going to be outlining uh, to you today. The panel itself comprises uh, members of, and representatives of a whole range of organisations with an interest in Welsh archaeological archives. We've got representatives from Welsh Government through Kamal and Cadw, both being represented, and a whole range of key organisations, including CIFA Cymru. Um, Andrew Marvell, who's uh, with us this morning, um, he is the liaison point between the National Panel and the Historic Environment Group. So it's he who presents reports back up to um, the HEG meetings um, and thus gives us um, that voice um, into uh, that, that key group, which is um, advising the Minister on these matters. Um, the panel agreed um, a remit, um, HEG has approved that, um, so we have a very clear brief as to what it is we should be doing. Um, primary role being to promote, promote and support consistent standards in a whole range of areas concerning archaeological archives. So when I was appointed, appointed the chair of the panel, I've set um, two tasks initially by HEG. Uh, both of which appeared in the Minister's Headline Action Plan for Wales for last year. Um, the first of these was to undertake a review of the storage, access to and use of archaeological archives in Wales. And the second was to conduct a review of the current national standards for Wales for collecting and depositing archaeological archives. Um, the review itself of archaeological archives was undertaken during 2013 and into 2014 and this was funded by several of the organisations represented by the membership of the National Panel. So as you can see here, funders include Welsh Government, uh, both Cadw and Kamal supported it, 
and SMA were very generous in their support to the National Museum, Royal Commission, the Welsh Archaeological Trusts each um, contributed to, and the Federation uh, for Welsh Museums um, and Art Galleries in Wales are now um, paying translation costs for us as well. Um, we appointed Rachel Edwards of Arboretum Archaeological Consultancy, working in partnership with Mike Hayworth of the Council for British Archaeology um, to undertake this review for us. And we had a number of um, objectives set for them. We wanted to assess the quantity of archaeological archives, um, both those held by the archive producers um, and also the quantity that was um, housed within the uh, museums as well. Um, we were also very interested to find out what the capacity is um, for future storage in the museums and in other uh, permanent repositories too. Uh, we were anxious to find out a bit more about um, the visibility of and access to and use of archives and the level of care as well that's afforded to them, um, both whilst they're in the temporary storage but also whilst they're in the care of the museums as well. Um, we also wanted to obtain um, a picture of how things have changed over the last 10 years since the uh, What's in Store report. Um, this we thought would be very useful to us in highlighting and um, helping us to identify any new issues that might have arisen, as well as perhaps picking up where things might have um, improved. But we felt that this was a useful mechanism for us to be able to develop options for the future management of archaeological archives. So we initially obtained um, information through questionnaires. Um, these were sent to both archive producers and archive managers, and I'm sure several of you, of you in the room will have um, helped us by uh, filling in these questionnaires for us. Uh, we had quite a good response rate. We received um, responses from 57 archive producers and from 36 museums and storage repositories. And we followed this up then with one-to-one -one conversations which Rachel held with 33 individual stakeholders. Um, the resultant report demonstrates that um, there remains a very large amount of material sitting in temporary store that uh, requires deposition in permanent repositories. Um, it's highlighted yet again that there's limited capacity within our museums to manage these, the existing archives that they're holding, let alone uh, taking on uh, more. And slightly more museums than 10 years ago we found didn't have uh, space for future growth. Um, the report also de has demonstrated that over the past 10 years that there's been quite an increase in the time it takes for <coughs> archives to be transferred to museums. The um, vast majority of the respondents indicated that this is largely due to a lack of staff time to be able to prepare the archives for deposition. Um, ownership issues crop up again and post-excavation work isn't always completed quite as fast as um, excavators would hope. <coughs> Um, amongst the archive producers, 21% of them worryingly don't have anyone with responsibility for managing the archives that they hold. Um, and yet the time that's being spent on those that do is surprisingly uh, small. Um, the level of care being afforded to the physical archive was deemed to have been improved, um, certainly in most of the archive producers' uh, storage areas. Um, but there's still some problem areas um, highlighted through the report as well. And uh, re repeating a bit what Helen's just said, um, digital archives were also uh, reported to be a major problem, um, particularly for the museums who are struggling to cope with digital files. Mm -hmm. So 10 years on though, we have seen um, areas of improvement. We've certainly seen the development both of the Welsh specific document of the creation and deposition of archaeological archives in Wales, but also the AAF um, document too, and uh, more recently the European um, archive uh, standards as well. So the survey itself really demonstrated that these standards are being used. Um, Ten years ago, most of our respondents said they weren't using any standard at all when they were preparing their archives. Now, um, virtually all of them, perhaps with the exception of the uh, university sector and the um, community archaeology sector, they see, still seem to be oblivious to that, but the profession definitely is, uh, has moved on. 
Um, in Wales, over the t past 10 years, um, there's been a steady decrease in the number of staff in the museum sector with responsibility for care for the archaeological archive. And increasingly, uh, staff time spent on this archive is much less than it once was, as um, quite a number of posts are being merged and um, there's an increased range of collections that each individual is now responsible for. Um, however, the use of volunteers in museums to work on these archives seems to have increased and um, museums were saying that they see this as um, uh, something that they'll be doing uh, more of in the future as well. So um, they're also trying to increase awareness of the archives that they're holding, um, mainly using the internet um, to promote collection holdings and information, although um, I must say it didn't really believe that one in that um, it did seem that most of them really hadn't got the resources that they needed to be able to implement it to any great extent. So I think overall the picture is that there's been a deterioration in the situation over the 10 year period. So um, it gave us a nice basis um, then for us to be able to start to, to look at and start to uh, take ourselves forward. Um, the report itself makes 21 recommendations and I'm not going to bore you by going into each of those 21 recommendations. So I'm just going to um, talk very generally um, in, in three groupings, if you like. Um, first, recommendations concern the future. Um, I think it's really clear that what we need to be doing is to seek to future proof um, the archaeological archives. We need to be ensuring that the situation we're in is not going to get worse. Um, and therefore, we need to be um, creating archives to the highest uh, possible standard. Um, the second group of recommendations lie around use, education um, and uh, training. And I think there are um, several uh, creative ways that we might be able to help to increase the use of archives whilst also training future generations um, to uh, be able to deal more effectively uh, with them. And our third set of recommendations uh, lie around issues of legacy. Um, how can we uh, tackle and sort out all the problems that we're inheriting <coughs> perhaps due to uh, poor practice or just simply circumstances of the past? And I think the large area to tackle here will be the serious uh, storage problems that the report has again highlighted. Um, the National Panel has examined and we've gone through all of the recommendations and we've now identified um, a delivery <coughs> mechanism for each of the 21 recommendations. We've drawn up a strategy and a timetable for their implementation. Um, this document, we're calling it our Roadmap for the Future, this relies upon uh, named organisations, namely the National Panel itself, um, and uh, all of our uh, contributing organisations taking the lead for um, different uh, recommendations. Uh, our roadmap was um, presented to HEG last November where it was fully improved and endorsed. So we have um, that high level support to take things for forward. Um, wisely, I think, um, the ask the panel to start off by focusing our immediate attention upon future proofing, ensuring that we contain the situation that we're in, um, we prevent the situation from getting any worse rather than going on perhaps to tackle uh, legacy issues when the situation is just building up uh, behind us. This isn't to say that we're ignoring the legacy or go on and explain some of the things we're starting to do there. But um, as soon as we feel we're in a position um, to focus attention more on that, then that's, that's the next uh, stage. So we'll be um, taking opportunities as they present themselves to, uh, to deliver these recommendations and then move on to the legacy. So how are we doing this? Well, um, as I said right from the outset, as I took over the chair, uh, position of the national panel, I was also tasked with undertaking a review of the current national standards for Wales for collecting and depositing archaeological archives. The intention that we have in Wales, and um, it does seem that this is being taken forward, is that 
um, requirements for archaeological archiving are going to be fully referenced in a technical advice note that's going to be linked to our heritage bill. So the intention is that when a local planning authority grants consent with conditions for a development that impacts on the archaeological site, it must satisfy itself that the necessary arrangements, not only for the excavation and recording of the archaeological remains are in place, and the results of the archaeological work are properly analysed and published, but also that they are properly archived. Um, the document containing the Welsh standards for deposition will be referenced in this document as the detailed standard that must now be followed. Um, the current document we're using was um, produced back in 2008. It's already out of date, um, so it's very timely that we're now um, uh, reviewing it. Um, we've um, produced, uh, we've seen that a number of documents have come forward since we wrote it um, that uh, we can draw on. So we're now in the process of undertaking a full review of this and um, this will be, um, I think, a very key element in our future planning area. Another critical area that's been identified and we've talked a bit about um, digital records is digital archiving. Uh, work on this has now been completed by Gareth Edwards of the Royal Commission on the Ancient and Historic Monuments of Wales um, and uh, he's been working on behalf of the Records Coordination Group uh, which is a group comprising CADU, Commission and the Welsh Trusts and he's now created uh, guidelines for producers of archaeological archives to inform the production, organisation and deposition of um, records for deposit within the National Monuments Record for Wales, which is where the panel will be recommending that all digital archives for Wales are deposited. And these will shortly be up and available for you to use. Uh, Welsh Archaeological Trusts have also um, been using the Achwilio project um, to digitise uh, great literature and to make that accessible too. Uh, we're also looking to improve things by drawing up a, an updated map of collecting areas which should help um, some of those of you uh, archive producers um, to know where to deposit um, your archives to. Uh, we're also considering box charges. Um, it's never been introduced in Wales for whatever reason, um, but we're looking into a possible Wales-wide approach to this. Uh, perhaps aiming to have a single set of um, charges, if at all possible, for Wales or something uh, we'll be discussing uh, in the future. We're also, um, in, in the context of, uh, of the future, looking at um, how we might uh, advise on selection, retention uh, strategies or procedures for Wales as well. Ideally, we'd like to be able to appoint an advisor for Wales, um, however, uh, that may be uh, a little tricky given the current uh, financial situation. So uh, for the time being, it's really the national panel who are playing this role, acting as that point of contact uh, regarding any questions concerning the archaeological archive. Um, and we'll be continuing to do that. Training and access, um, we've had the benefit of uh, two of the CIFA archive training programmes uh, being uh, taken place in Wales. Um, the two workshops were held in Blaina for Stiniog and Aberdilais last year with um, that. So uh, we've uh, embedded ourselves with the uh, CIFA archive training programme. Um, but there are other creative ways. I think we, we've been looking at the National Museum has used Cardiff University students um, in big training programmes for months, uh, month-long projects to um, help train them how to prepare an archaeological archive and to help us create <coughs> some backlog in the uh, national collection too. So um, by starting, by developing all of our standards, um, starting to promulgate them more effectively, trying to make sure that um, these are going to be used and tying um, all of these, I think, into the technical advice note for the Heritage Bill. I think we're beginning to be a bit more optimistic here in Wales that we might be going some way to start to solve some of the problems for the future and keep the road smooth. Um, there are um, going to be some uh, bumpy roads ahead, as I think the legacy is not going to go away anytime soon. Um, so whilst we are currently focusing our work on the future, um, 
we're, we're, we're also going to be looking at um, aspects of the legacy, trying to um, think about developing a risk management assessment tool, perhaps for some of those orphaned archives that might just help to ease their passage out of the temporary holders and into the permanent repositories. But um, we're very aware that the big issues of storage aren't going to go away anytime soon and that there will need to be some really concerted effort on this fairly soon. Um, it's fair to say in the year since the survey took place, things have changed. The situation is never static in this area, as you might expect. Um, we're aware that there are major cuts happening across all of our uh, museums at the present time and Wales is no exception to that. Indeed, the National Museum itself has lost two curator posts in archaeology over the past year and 70% of its archaeological conservation time too. So it, we're not immune, but I say that that situation is far, far worse in the local museums around Wales where there are massive cuts um, going on to budgets <coughs> here. Um, this is all being looked at at the moment by Kamal um, the Welsh Museums and Archives and Libraries Department who are trying to uh, establish exactly what the impact of all of these cuts will be um, and in terms of the delivery of archaeological and other services of course across Wales. Um, and I think um, all of this is going to um, have impact again on the on the National Museum and put us under greater strain too because we're, we're sort of being expected to pick up the pieces, which is, is not an easy uh, situation uh, to currently uh, be in and something uh, we're having to have internal discussions now about as to what our role actually should be in this. Um, so uh, I think to sum up um, the survey itself, I think we've our roadmap, there are black spots on the road ahead of us. It's not entirely going to be uh, a straightforward um, on our journey. However, um, as we start this process of future-proofing archaeological archives in Wales, I think um, we can really start off by trying to ensure that this situation doesn't get worse in order to ensure that this really important and re irreplaceable resource that we manage gets uh, well protected into the future. And I think in Wales it's fair to say that the National Panel, whilst we do have quite a task ahead of us, as we move on towards addressing all of the recommendations of this report, um, we're in a position, I think, to make sure that this, um, the issues remain in that spotlight. Um, the strength of our national panel lies in the fact that we do have the representatives of all of the key organisations involved with all aspects of archive pr process represented on the panel. And so all of these organisations are engaged in the discussions. And also, I think through our profile, we're able to keep this very much at the forefront of the minds of our HEG members, the um, uh, lead uh, chief executives and um, directors of all of the key heritage organisations around Wales, and therefore through them, uh, keep the ministerial support going in order to take uh, this forward. So thank you. Thank you.